Just a few days ago, I saw this tweet showing a slide where the 3950X is basically tying the 9900K in sales, and the rest of the Ryzen lineup is killing it. Upon inspecting my local micro center, I also saw that they had many in stock at MSRP, and on Amazon, it's barely above MSRP, which, just as a sidebar here, don't overpay people. You can get them now. But when you go to the best sellers... It's Ryzen, it's Ryzen, it's Ryzen, and it's Ryzen. Meaning even at these quote-unquote higher-than-I-would-have-liked prices, people can't get enough of them. And they definitely can't get enough of the 2700X either. It is not end-of-life. They will keep selling it, and this will be the $100 to $150 8-core, 16-thread, 4.3 gigahertz i3, and I would argue i5 killer. Well, AMD also sells a 12 nanometer upgraded version of the R5 1600 to make Pentiums a complete laughingstock. I mean, honestly, think of how insane this is. It would be like if during Pile Driver, when AMD was at their lowest, Intel just started to sell Sandy Bridge i7s for $100 while they kept selling Skylake. 2014 was a dark time for AMD where they were forced to sell what looked relatively worse and worse products versus Intel's ever increasingly more efficient products. They were forced to sell the FX9590, a product that could use 300 watts on its own, this graph here showing total system power consumption, while trying to desperately cling to a tie, a tie with some of Intel's top consumer products it definitely didn't win over any fans but now it looks like intel's on the same path as well a 300 watt desktop chip that will be lucky if it can compete with some of amd's top consumer products and this gets me to the first point i need to make before i get into some new information the idea that all intel needs to do is make better 14 nanometer chips and just get to 7 nanometer is bullshit. Just getting to 7 nanometer is not going to cut it when their 14 nanometer can barely beat AMD's 12 nanometer. AMD's on 7 nanometer right now, and they will be launching Zen 3 by the beginning of 2021, and Zen 3 should at least be 20%, probably more though overall in terms of efficiency, better than Zen Two, they need something now. They need to get to 10 nanometer now. If they get to 7 nanometer in 2022, it will not matter if AMD is already launching 3 nanometer products. Not 5 nanometer, 3. 14 nanometer will continue to be incredibly useful for Intel for the bottom half of their product stat. But even at about that 50, that 60% performance mark, it's starting to lose all usefulness there too. For God's sakes, a 10 core using 300 watts while AMD is selling 110 watt roughish 3900Xs that have 12 cores, it's over. And as AMD continues to ramp into 7 nanometer EUV, 5 nanometer, and eventually by 2023, 3 nanometer products, Intel has to have something there that's not a third as good. A 10 core using 300 watts is more energy than 64 core Threadripper. Its usefulness in even the top half of their product stack is spent. They need something to at least occupy the top few Halo products, and it has to be on a fully working 10 nanometer. I know we make our jokes until waiting for 10 nanometer, waiting for 10 nanometer, but the jokes are over. It's We're not joking about 10 nanometer in 2018 anymore. It's 2020. Where's 10 nanometer? Well, I've got a little bit of information, so let's get into it. It's called Alder Lake, and this is a name that's actually been on roadmaps other people have seen for a while. However, I think the big information here, at least as you can see in this email, is that it is meant to get some more mainstream variations. That should mean a larger product stack for mobile unlike the existing ice lake that's really only in select halo products that throttle a ton but there's also decent suggestion in other emails that this could be on 
desktop. So let's get into the information here. But before I do, let's just touch on this again, my Whispers of Golden Cove video, where I really thought it was funny how many people insisted I was saying Intel could just put Sunny Cove on 14 nanometer, even though I never said that. I said perhaps Golden Cove could be on 10 nanometer, 7 nanometer, or 14. But 10. It could be on 10. And I mean, if we know Intel's bringing out 38 core, 10 nanometer Ice Lake server chips, I don't think it's any kind of crazy thing to say that they'll definitely bring some higher core count 10 nanometer parts to laptop. Although to me, it felt like just a little bit of speculation and hype to say it was coming to desktop. Well, that was until I saw leaks and articles pop up of LGA 1700 that directly called out Alder Lake, LGA 1700. And we know they're going to LGA 1200 for Comet Lake 10 cores and supposedly for Rocket Lake, though Rocket Lake might just be a faster clocked refresh of Comet Lake. So that's decently bigger on 10 nanometer, a node that has up to 2.7 times the density. I just don't think it's insane at all to think that they might be way upping their core count game in 2021. But let's talk about what early information I do have for this Alder Lake desktop release in 2021. Supposedly the tap out is going to be summer or early fall this year. Remember, the tap out for Ice Lake server was actually over a year ago, but then they had all the power and clock issues, and so they had to keep working on it and try to improve the process before they could ever try to launch it. And so like Ice Lake server mid this year, along with Tiger Lake, which will use Willow Cove cores, and that's also right when they'll start working on Alder Lake. Intel is supposedly, again, supposedly fixing their 10 nanometer process to not be completely worthless, and so they are working overtime to get products out as soon as it is working properly. And based on that picture I just showed of LGA 1700, the density of up to 2.7 times as much, I think it's pretty safe to say that they'll go to at least 10 cores. And remember, this isn't ice lake right so who knows maybe you could have 16 cores and have a dual ring bus or use some other type of improved mesh interconnect that doesn't have the performance penalty it currently does for gaming again that part right there was just speculation what i know is about the size of the package and the size of the package is bigger than comet lake s for desktop so with the density i just don't see why there would be any reason it won't have at least 10 cores on 10 nanometer on desktop with Golden Cove. And remember, Golden Cove has more IPC than Willow Cove, which is also supposed to have about a 5 to 10% increase over Ice Lake. So again, like I said in that other video in October, yes, this should have a sizable, sizable IPC increase. Although remember, it's not competing with Zen 1. It's competing with Zen 3 and eventually Zen 4. So it will need that IPC increase to survive. And also note that currently Ice Lake splits up some of its die to a separate 14 nanometer chip. And there's no reason why Alder Lake wouldn't also do this. So that can also explain to a certain extent why it's a bit longer. And I also actually think it might just be to leave more space for anything that comes out after it or under it. Under it meaning Rocket Lake. I still feel we don't know enough information about Rocket Lake, and there have been rumblings that they might do some sort of a Cove port to 14 nanometer. It would make sense if at the top of their product stack in 2021, they had Halo 10 nanometer products with high core counts, and then they just made some kind of Cove port on 14 nanometer at eight cores or less to fill out the bottom part of their lineup. Like I said, 14 nanometer is still good enough for that. So yeah, I mean, kind of half of that was speculation based on publicly available information out there. And some of that did come from a couple of sources I talked to. I hope that's what happens. I hope Intel can get out a Zen 3 level IPC chip with 10 cores or more in 2021, filled out by a good port of 14 nanometer budget chips that still run some kind of a Cove core. I think that'd be excellent. But we're just not going to know, probably for a year, actually, if any of that will be possible, and if Intel will just be flat out screwed until 2023. I certainly hope they're not, because that would be very bad for competition. But the good news for us, us people who like talking about the future, is that there will be a canary in the coal mine, and it's going to be Ice Lake 
server. And I actually want to talk about Intel's server strategy and what it means for their 10 nanometer plans a little bit here. So if you actually go back and look at their roadmaps, they were planning Ice Lake server for a while. The people I talked to at Intel really did. Not everyone, I'm sure some people knew they were hosed, but many people at Intel really really did think they were going to get to 10 nanometer in a good way in 2018, that it wouldn't be some fake launch of Cannon Lake and then a limited launch of Ice Lake in 2019. They thought they would get there on time. And if you actually go back and look at old articles, you can see Intel did think they were going to have Ice Lake out in 2018 or 2019 with 38 cores up to 230 watts. Now, of course, we know from recent leaks it's going to be more like 270 watts, but this Ice Lake server chip with 38 cores was designed a while ago. It was not designed as some double horrible Cascade Lake X chip that uses 400 watts. Things have just gone way worse than the engineers knew it would go. And you know what's not on any of these roadmaps back then? Cooper Lake. Cooper Lake is not there. And again, if you go back two years, you can find Ice Lake with 38 cores with that same LGA socket, the 4189 socket listed with no mention of Cooper Lake. And Cooper Lake supposedly will use some kind of 14 nanometer IO die, but we do know that Ice Lake uses 14 nanometer IO dies. So you see what I'm getting to here? I think they really thought they could get Ice Lake server out late 2018 or 2019. And when it became abundantly clear that was not happening, they cobbled together a Frankenstein chip called Cooper Lake. Cooper Lake is a placeholder, and it has an 8-channel memory controller, probably derived from what Ice Lake will end up using. So this will just be that drop-in, something better than Cascade Lake, you know, AP. Uh, I suppose there will also be a 56-core version of this, and that'll just be there to stave off people so they can say, hey, look, but don't worry you'll be able to drop in 38-core Ice Lake server, a better IPC, better features, secured, far less security problems, and be incredibly more efficient. That's what's coming. Don't leave us yet. We're having a new socketed server. You don't need to get those soldered on 400-watt 56 cores. You can get this. You can get this now in 2020, and Ice Lake server will be here. Trust us. That's what I think's going on. And so we'll just have to see. And I think there's a decent chance Ice Lake server... Well, certainly not as good as Rome and not Milan will be a substantial upgrade over what they have, well, right now. And if it is, if it is a substantial upgrade, if they can get clock speeds on Ice Lake server close to what Cooper Lake can do, then I think, yeah, there, there'll be no reason for us to doubt at the end of this year that Intel may have some decent 10 nanometer desktop chips coming. How many? I don't know. They don't have enough foundries to make it their entire lineup. Why not have that, you know, the top i7s, maybe a couple, and then a couple of i5s partially disabled, and then the rest of the i5s, maybe some of the i7s, and everything else below it's, you know, pen, you know, Pentiums, i3s, Celerons, all still be 14 nanometer. It makes sense. It makes sense that they would do that if Ice Lake Server pans out. But we're just going to have to see. And I guess the last thing I can say is I don't think Ice Lake Server is two separate dies. I know Cooper Lake is supposedly an IO die uh, and then two core dies, but I don't think Ice Lake is. I think it will just be one big 38 core. Remember, this was designed years ago, and they actually thought they'd be able to get it out. And think of 38. It's not two 19 cores. Or at least I'll be very surprised if it is. That's just a bit of speculation. But I do think it's just one big 38-core die. So again, I don't see why. I just don't see why they can't get that on desktop. And as much as a little bit of this is optimism, I think it's logical because they need it. They need something that can at least compete a little bit with Zen 3. No, it won't have probably the same core counts or be quite as good overall. And God knows Milan will be better server chips. But they need to have this stuff out so that they're still only a little more behind in the future than they are right now until they can get 7 nanometer. Where they are now is half as good as AMD. Half as good. And half as good, you can't become a third as good. Because when you become a third as good, AMD's low-end products start beating your high-end. Already we're seeing AMD brag about their 16-core 
you know, consumer chip, one that I have here running silently, beating Intel's AGDT 18 core that screams at 200 watts. And that's why I think they will try to rush some kind of an Alder Lake, Rocket Lake hybrid setup out as a lineup in 2021. Or at least, I really hope they do. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. This was a fun, kind of out of nowhere, Whispers video, wasn't it? Uh, share it. It helps so much. And tell your friends, listen to Broken Silicon, support me on Patreon, and listen to Die Shrink. Listen to the new Flyover States coming soon, and spread the word. All right, thank you.